From the very beginning, Pontiac was never the kind of company to play it safe. Between 1926 and 2010, they built a reputation for rebellion. The brand that lived on the edge of innovation. Even under the massive umbrella of General Motors, Pontiac carried a spark that refused to die out. They were the ones who injected excitement into the American car scene, constantly challenging conventions. And before the legendary GTO roared into existence, something equally daring was quietly taking shape behind Pontiac's doors. An experimental idea that would become one of the boldest engine projects in the company's history. It involved taking their well-loved V8 engine and literally slicing it in half to create a four-cylinder powerhouse unlike anything else on the road. It was called the Pontiac Trophy 4, a short-lived but unforgettable chapter in Pontiac's legacy. This strange creation can be traced back to the work of Malcolm Mack Keller, one of Pontiac's most brilliant powertrain engineers. His small internal team was tasked with exploring new ways to improve fuel economy without sacrificing performance. A tall order in the late 1950s. During one of their early experiments, they took a Pontiac Catalina, fitted with a big V8, and disabled one entire bank of cylinders. The result was surprising. Even with half the engine effectively shut down, the car could still cruise at highway speeds without much struggle. That single experiment planted a seed. Maybe there was a future for a smaller, more efficient Pontiac engine. By the end of the 1950s, the American car market was changing. The post-war boom years had been dominated by big, heavy, chrome-covered land yachts, but consumers were beginning to crave something different. Suburbs were growing, cities were getting crowded, and families wanted cars that were easier to park, cheaper to fuel, and still comfortable. General Motors responded by creating the Y-Body platform, a smaller, lighter design that could be customized. Across different GM divisions, Buick had the Skylark, Oldsmobile had the F85, and Pontiac would soon get its own version, the Tempest. But as always, Pontiac wasn't interested in simply rebadging another GM car. Under the leadership of the ambitious and daring John DeLorean, they wanted something truly distinct. While other GM divisions played it safe with conventional designs, Pontiac went in a completely different direction. The new 1961 Tempest would break nearly every rule of American car design at the time. Instead of a standard rear axle, Pontiac engineers gave it an independent rear suspension, something usually reserved for European sports cars. They even mounted the transmission at the back of the car, creating a rear transaxle setup that helped balance weight distribution perfectly between the front and rear. The result was a smoother ride, a flatter floor inside the cabin, and enough room to seat six passengers comfortably. It was advanced, strange, and ahead of its time. But the true oddity of the Tempest lay under the hood. That's where Pontiac's experimental 45-degree slanted four-cylinder engine lived, the so-called Trophy 4. The engine's design philosophy was as radical as the car it powered, Instead of developing an entirely new engine from scratch, Pontiac took their existing 389 cubic inch V8, the same one that powered their muscle cars, and literally cut it in half. They kept the same bore of 4.06 inches and stroke of 3.66 inches, which meant they could use the same pistons, rods, and several other components from the 389. This made production cheaper and simpler, a huge plus for a major automaker. Of course, some parts had to be redesigned, the engine block had to be recast to close off the missing half, and a new crankshaft had to be developed to work with the inline four layout. Yet, in many ways, the new engine was still a 389 at heart. It even kept the original 45-degree slant from the V8 design and could use the same cylinder head. Exhaust Manifold In total, over a hundred parts were interchangeable between the V8 and the four-cylinder version, allowing both engines to be built on the same assembly line with minimal modification. When all was said and done, this new half AV8 displaced 194.5 cubic inches, massive by four-cylinder standards. It wasn't exactly smooth or quiet, but it was powerful, durable, and undeniably unique. Pontiac had once again proved 
that when it came to innovation, they weren't afraid to defy expectations, even if it meant building one of the strangest engines in American history. The Pontiac Trophy 4 wasn't just unusual, it was also unexpectedly heavy, since it was built from repurposed V8 components, the engine block was cast in solid iron, and so were the cylinder heads. The end result? A four-cylinder engine that weighed roughly 550 pounds. For comparison, the little 1.8-liter inline-4 from an MGB, a common British Roadster engine, weighed around 450 pounds. Pontiac's creation offered more displacement and power, yes, but it carried that advantage with a substantial weight penalty. The Trophy 4 came in several variations depending on trim level and performance preference. The base model featured a simple two-barrel carburetor and an 8.6 per St. 1 compression ratio, good for about 115 horsepower. A mid-range version increased compression to 10.25 and made 140 horsepower, while the top-tier model, equipped with a four-barrel carburetor, delivered a surprisingly strong 166 horsepower. On paper, it sounded perfectly balanced, half the displacement and roughly half the power of Pontiac's full 389 V8, but numbers alone didn't tell the full story. For all its clever engineering and shared parts, the Trophy 4 was, at its heart, a compromise. And that compromise came with some serious drawbacks, the most noticeable being vibration. Traditional four-cylinder engines are designed from the ground up with balance shafts, counterweights, or specific crank designs to smooth out the natural vibrations of the layout. Pontiac's half V8 didn't have any of that. Because it was literally one side of a V8, it kept the same crank pin spacing and firing order, but with no opposing bank of pistons to balance the forces. The result? An engine that shook so violently at idle, it could make the dashboard buzz and mirrors tremble. Some drivers joked that the car felt like it was trying to escape its own frame. Pontiac engineers did what they could to tame the beast. They mounted the engine with heavy-duty rubber isolators and used the car's flexible rope drive shaft as a sort of vibration dampener. It helped, but only slightly. Inside the cabin, the shaking was still noticeable, and often annoying. And to make matters worse, the engine's weight didn't help the Tempest's handling. At 550 pounds, the Trophy 4 was heavier than the aluminum Buick, built 215 V8 that Pontiac also offered as an option. That small V8 made more power, was smoother, and weighed nearly 200 pounds less. But it also cost more, and that's where most buyers drew the line. Nearly 95% of Tempest customers chose the Trophy 4 over the Buick V8 simply because it was cheaper. It wasn't until they lived with the car for a while that some realized the aluminum V8 might have been worth every extra dollar. The Trophy 4's life was short. When the second-generation Tempest arrived in 1964, Pontiac ditched the experimental setup entirely. The car moved to GM's A-body platform, sharing architecture with models like the Chevelle and Cutlass. That meant a return to a more traditional layout. Front engine, rear-wheel drive, and a solid axle outback. The unique rear-mounted transaxle and flexible drive shaft were gone, and with them the Trophy 4 disappeared from Pontiac's lineup after just three model years. Still, calling the Trophy 4 a failure wouldn't be fair. For all its quirks, it had strengths. The big four-cylinder produced excellent low-end torque, and its oversized internals made it incredibly tough. Because the engine was based on components designed for much higher power levels, it could take a beating, and some hot rodders took full advantage of that. With some tuning and carburetor work, Builders were able to squeeze out 180 to 200 horsepower, and in supercharged form, some even pushed past 300 horsepower. Those builds were rare, but when done right, they transformed the oddball engine into something genuinely exciting, and visually, the supercharger sitting atop that slanted 45-degree block looked absolutely wild. Most owners, however, weren't chasing performance. They bought the Tempest for its affordability and practicality. A stylish, smaller Pontiac that carried a premium badge without the premium price. 
In that sense, it filled the same role as what we'd now call an entry-level luxury car, something like an early American version of a BMW 3 Series. It did its job, even if it did so with a bit of a shake. Eventually, Pontiac replaced the Trophy 4 with more refined engines, including the overhead cam 6, which became one of the brand's most respected motors. The Trophy 4 might not have been a great engine by conventional standards, but it was undeniably different. It represented an era when Pontiac dared to experiment, when engineers and designers weren't afraid to take wild risks in the name of innovation. It might have rattled, it might have been heavy, but it was pure Pontiac. Bold, creative, and unafraid to stand out.